Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I've got a real juicy guest and I discovered you because you did a post that kind of went viral. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, she goes by on Instagram, the Ho Mentor, spelled H-E-A-U-X Mentor, and but your real name's Lydia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to read what you wrote. Can I read this? Yes, please. Okay. So this was what you posted a few months ago. Exactly one year ago, my sugar daddy Brad passed away. He was 47 and died because of a heart attack and unrelated diabetes. We had an incredible toxic relationship, and ultimately, I wish I'd never met him. (laughs) As horrible as he was, I'm sitting here and trying to dig up a good memory to remember him on this day. So here it is, Brad. You bought me my first pair of Louboutins, my first Birkin, and my first and only racehorse. And then she did a racehorse emoji. (laughs) You understand the value of my time. And for that, I honor you with my time today by making this post for you. I still don't forgive you for taking me out of the will after you attacked me while you were on whippets. However, you knew I would always be okay. And yes, living a double life with this, wait, this cut cut off this whole time. (laughs) Anyway, the best part is, and then you say, never haunt my dreams again. Yeah, he haunted me. It was really offensive. What is, okay, what is your, we want to get into Brad, but first I just want to get like your background, your story, where are you from? What I'm is from New York. Story? I grew up in New York on Long Island. Okay. Uh, I moved out when I was 18, did a stint in Jersey, then I ended up in L.A. shooting porn. Then I became... Okay, so wait, hold on. Oh. So you leave Jersey yeah. at 18. Yeah. Because you just wanted to always imagine, you always imagined life in L.A. or being in... in... I was working so much in L.A. So I, I left New York when I was 18. Okay. And I had moved to Jersey with some guy. Okay. I'm always getting taken away romantically by guys. Anyway. Yes. So we moved to Jersey... And um, I had always wanted to get into porn. I told him that from the day I met him. Now, when did you decide that you wanted to get into porn? Like, how old were you? Like, at five years old, you're like, (laughs) one day I hope to be Jenna Jameson? Or what was the deal? It was, I think, the first time when I played Spice Girls and I was posh. Okay. And I just, like... Like, As a little girl, That was, like, the moment where I was, like, this... I was, like, playing a character. And she was so sexy and cool. And I was like, if this is a job, I want to do that. And I found out about I mean, you did pick the best one. <laughs> she was the best dress. Yes. Yeah, really and so Pot Spice made you think that she that was more like work. porn? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Just the, all the Spice Girls in general, like they were so empowered. They were so sexy. Yeah. I, I just wanted to be like them and okay. <laughs> correlated with sex work. And did you ever share that with like personal friends and stuff? Like, you know what? I'm going to go to L.A. and I'm going to be a very successful porn star. Um, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I was just, I've always, like, at that time in my life, I mean, I had just gotten out of an institution. So I What were you in the institution so for? Um, just, like, a lot of stuff. Well, like what? <laughs> drugs, violence, and when nervous did you, breakdown. <laughs> when did you start doing drugs? Uh, when I was 14. Well, when I was 12. I went to rehab for the first time when I was 14. Oh, what, kind of, what were you doing at 12? Like, what was your first <laughs> experiment with drugs? Because they didn't um, have vaping back then. They so didn't what have was it? vaping. Um, I... I don't even remember, honestly. I don't remember the first time I got high. Well, like, who introduced you to it? My boyfriend. You had a boyfriend (laughs) at 12? I got pregnant by him when I was 13, and he was also my drug dealer. How old was he? (laughs) 17. And what was he? I know, it's so bad. I didn't even think we were going to go here. (laughs) Why not? I have to go here. But wait a minute. Like, where did your parents even know? So you're like in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. They knew. Well, they, they knew I was pregnant. I tried to fool my mom on April Fool's Day by taking a pregnancy test to make her think that I was pregnant. And I was going to color in the second blue line, blue, and then I took it and it was actually blue. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I was pregnant, yeah. So you didn't play that trick then? You just kept it to yourself? No, it was happening live. Like she, just, I had to tell her. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, oh, she wasn't happy. Yeah. So she, oh, so she, so you didn't hide the t- test from her. Then she was no, there watching. no. I immediately was like, "I'm in trouble." Like this is a bad thing that I did. And so, did she even know that you were having sex? No, and I was so mad because I had asked her when I was 13. I was like, "Listen, I need to get on birth control." And she was like, "Why?" I'm like, "Why does anyone need to get on birth control?" And she was like, "No, you're not having sex." I was like having sex like I need to be on birth control and she just completely just blocked and it were out your parents mind. together still at that time no I think they were divorced by then and do you have any siblings four yeah so what number are you right in the middle so I have two younger and then two older okay middle child syndrome am I right <laughs> I don't know so so what what so 
you tell her you're pregnant and mm-hmm. you're in what grade? Seventh or eighth? Uh, I think it was in seventh grade. Oh my god! That was and, so and, crazy. Yeah. And how did you meet this seventeen year old guy? Uh, probably at a party. That's, so did you look? Did you really ma- blurry? So did you mature? <laughs> did you look a lot older right away? Like I don't think that so. Girl? No, I don't think so. I was just, I was just really crazy. Like, I was really wild. I don't know. How, I mean, sneaking out of the house. Yeah. Oh yeah. All that. Did you ever see the movie Thirteen? I saw it way after I was thirteen. And did <laughs> yeah. it remind you of your life? A kinda? little. Yeah. It's like, yeah. This is just how crazy. I saw it when I was older, and I was really afraid for them, and then my child self. Yeah, I'm really surprised I've made it this far. Wow. Yeah. It's, I, so what happened then? What did your mom do? She, the first thing she said, which was actually really cool, she asked me, "What a, what are you gonna do?" Mm-hmm. And then I was so relieved. I was like, "Oh my god, I have a choice." Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to have my drug dealer's baby. Right. <laughs> so okay. I didn't. So I had an abortion. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you're so young. Don't even. Yeah. I, yeah. That was fine. Um. Health wise, <laughs> you're so young. That's risky, you know? Yeah, it just didn't It didn't seem like a good fit at the time. <laughs> no. Okay, so then was she like, well, you're never seeing this guy again? No. Um, they met at my intervention later on. Um, <laughs> what was your intervention like? Um, I left. I got there, and I was like, <laughs> was it no? <laughs> was it at a hotel like Radisson? No, no, it was actually at his house. <laughs> well, you know, you ever watch Intervention? It's always oh. like at that sad hotel room. But no. I mean, that's why because I have to film it. But oh yours was no, not it was at my show. it was at my boyfriend's house. Actually, I guess my mom had gotten together with his mom, and they both knew we were on drugs. Oh, so both of you were gonna have to go to a rehab? No, just me. Oh. His mom was way cooler than mine. <laughs> well, maybe the mom was like, well, he needs to keep his job selling the drugs. <laughs> but we'll lose one client. <laughs> my God. Yeah, that's, I'm sure that was the conversation they all had. Okay. Yeah, so I left. I just walked in. And I was like, this is, this is when you decide to be a parent? <laughs> and th- this is when you step in? Okay, fine. So I left. My boyfriend followed me. And then we got high in his Astro van. <laughs> got high in <on> what? <laughs> we think we were just smoking weed at that time. Okay. But we were spraying it with... Um, with like hornet killer and then putting cocaine in it as well so like it wasn't so wait, just weed. So wait you take some you take some pot some weed and then you I get on long island okay you get hornet cleaner killer, killer. Like, the, like the spray it's like um has like an orange top and you why just, would that make your pot better it just it just gets you really high like i don't think i don't think better. a lot of people know about the hornet cleaner <laughs> cleaner killer Killer. killer. Yeah. Okay. And then you add cocaine to it. This so, is like, you're so making you... like a casserole. <laughs> I mean, if it's available. <laughs> I don't know if we had coke that time. Okay. But, so uh... then you're smoking that. So you wait, then you rolled it in a joint and smoke it? Mm-hmm. Okay. A blunt. It was a blunt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then like a couple weeks later, I overdosed on uh, sleeping pills and woke up in the hospital. So, Where did you overdose? Who called the hospital? Who I called just, the pl- I don't remember. I was just So then how long are you in rehab for then? Um that time it was like, like a few months. And then what happened? I left. Was okay for a while and then started using drugs again. Did you ever enter into regular high school? Yeah, yeah, I did high school for, for a bit. Uh-huh. Um, and then I got institutionalized again. And I was for gone. doing drugs or for um, having had, psychology, psychological uh, issues? I had like a complete nervous breakdown. Okay. But a lot of it had to do with drugs as well. It was like yes. my dad was like molesting me. Oh, he but was? It, yeah, but your I. Your biological father? Mm-hmm. But I didn't Married know. to your mom, but they yeah. were divorced. Yeah. And so you'd go visit him or you remembered yeah, it? Visit what happened? Him, and then he would molest me. So I would always tell my mom, like, I don't want to go see dad. I don't want to go see him. And she was just like, she was just a bad, like, she's a bad parent. I don't think she's a bad person. She's a really bad mom. And she. What about your other siblings? Do you think he touched your other siblings? No, because, so I only have one full-blooded sibling, which is my older brother. So Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he didn't molest Joe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But I have two stepsisters, which he didn't have contact with. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was them. And then my youngest brother's like 12. So. so the stepsisters came from your mom's second husband? One from my mom's second husband and then one from my dad's second wife. <laughs> and why do you think that she wasn't a victim? I mean, maybe she was. She's crazy, too. <laughs> God. So how many years did the abuse go on for? It's hard because I part of the reason why I had a nervous breakdown is because I was blacking it all out. Mm-hmm. So I was showing all the signs of sexual abuse. But then when people are like, what's going on? I didn't know because it was right. totally blacked out. But I'm pretty sure, like, one of my earliest memories was being afraid of my dad, like, being left alone with him. And I was, like, crying to my aunt that I did not want to be with him. And I was probably five. 
Mm. So, and that went on till, I mean, had to be at like at least 12, older than that. And then when I got released from the institution, they released me into his care. So I got worse after that. I so had at, to get into porn. I had, I had but to so get at the So it, even though you were in therapy in this institution, you weren't at a point of acknowledging or telling anyone. No, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't realize that I was sexually abused by him until I moved out of New York and away from him. And, and when did you, and then flashes. you would get flashes of the mm-hmm. memories, like the suppressed memories? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you, then one day I was yeah. with my, my ex and we went to go visit my dad for a holiday. And I kept telling my ex, I'm like, he, he abused me, he abused me, he didn't believe me. Until he saw my dad taking pictures of like a girl at like this Christmas party, like up her dress. And he was like. So you're at a Christmas party with your dad and your boyfriend <laughs> and he sees your dad doing that to a young girl. Mm-hmm, and I was like, I told you. I told you, let's get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> oh my God. So was that the last time you saw him? Yeah. And is he, have he, has he ever tried to reach out since? Yeah. He tried to send a package to my house. This is why I stopped talking to my mom. I got my, my primary residence. And I made the mistake of giving my mom the address. I had her come visit me. She really wanted Here to, in L.A. Mm-hmm, she uh-huh. really wanted to visit me in L.A. And we were trying to patch things up. So I was like, fine. So I, had her, I flew her out for the weekend. She came. Everything was fine. And I told her, you can't give anyone this address. I don't want people to know where I live. And she's like, I swear, who am I going to tell? I don't know anyone. At that point, she had knew that my dad abused me. Mm-hmm. And she was being pretty chill about that. And we we're just like, whatever, let's just put it behind us. Six months later, around Christmas time, I get a package on my front door from my father. And Did I'm you like, open it? No. No, I left it on the front porch. Um, so I had my So mom. you wouldn't even open it? You Pardon weren't me. even. There's nothing he could send me that I'd be interested in owning. Like, nothing. So I asked her, I was like, Did you give dad my address? And she's like, Yeah. I'm like, You knew that he sexually assaulted me? And you give him my home address. And she goes, well, yeah, he was asking about you. He wanted to send you a gift. You don't want a gift? Like, bitch, I'm a millionaire. What the fuck I want a gift from my father for? Like, the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, my God. Yeah, I haven't spoken to her since. She still emails me so often, like, trying to get communication that I'm considering, a, like, a restraining order. Because it's just, like, it's so it's so distracting. Yeah, it sucks your day away, right? When, yeah, when, and then when you're like, going back and forth. And she like sends like other family members to like try and get in touch with me. I'm like, don't you have a job? Like, don't don't you like what do you do with your life? She's crazy too. Oh god, they're all crazy. So you don't talk to any of the family now. I just can't. So you came out here at 18. You said to say 18. A Jersey 18. I, w- I was. It's hard because I was bi-coastal. I had yeah. Tried- I started shooting porn when I was 19. And how and how did you do that? Did you go like straight to Vivid and audition? Like what was your, I mean, you seem pretty business minded. So what was <laughs> your route? <laughs> so what was your route to become the most successful porn actress in the world? <laughs> Listen, I'm already telling you everything. You don't need to flatter me. Okay. okay. <laughs> I appreciate it though. And we have that on record. The most successful. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, so I had started uh, webcam modeling. Okay. What year was this? Like, how long ago was this? How old am I now? It was almost 10 years ago. Okay. Like, kind of right when it started then, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I started webcam modeling. So were you always good at the computer? I don't think, no. I'm, I don't think I'm good enough at the computer to be a webcam model. I was not good at the computer. I Okay, so I was living in poverty at that point. Like, uh-huh. I had no money. Like, it just... So I conned this guy out of his wedding ring. And <laughs> How did you con him out of his wedding? So you're on a date with some guy? No, no, we were on the train. I yeah. was taking the Amtrak on the way to see the guy that I was dating in New Jersey. Yeah. And there was this, like, I was just always a hustler. I mean, I used to sell high fives at bodegas. Like, you, What are you, high fives at bodegas? I don't even know what you're talking oh. about. <laughs> so high fives, let me do this with someone. Yes. And a bodega is like a Spanish deli. Okay. So I guess they don't have them out here. Okay. So I would go when the immigrants would get paid. On Fridays. Yes. And since they were immigrants, they didn't have bank accounts. So they were just full of cash all the time. Okay. So I would go and flirt with them. And I would get them to, like, touch me. It was called a high five. Yeah. And then they would pay me. So that was, like, my first, like, So wait. Response. I'm going to be... I'm going to be... I'm going to be the immigrant at the Spanish deli. Okay? You don't okay? be that. Let me just... I don't know. I want to see how you would have me get to touch you for... I mean, it's not hard. Like, just tell me. I, oh, hello! You look so pretty. I can't do this <laughs> just do it. It's more. Imagine it's, I'm like a sixty year old. It's like more of like, it's more of like a look. Like it's, okay, it's, the seduction with me always starts like in the eyes. So like when I okay. catch your eyes, it's over. You're done. Okay. Everything you want. Is okay, mine. beauty. <laughs> oh what the, what can I do for you? Do you want a sandwich? <laughs> no, what's your money? <laughs> I oh, can't, I, I can't. don't know what what you do for my money. <laughs> Just do it. I have to see your method. I can't seduce you. 
your your game to it. I can't do it. You're you're on to me. How much do have to how much do they get to touch you? Just like a titty feel for Just ten dollars like or what? Dollars. Five dollars, so you can like start to touch me for five dollars, and you say that to them. Yeah, and then you in stop. English, in English, yeah, they understand. They don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a pretty girl. I'm like an 18 year old girl in a bodega. Like I don't belong in a bodega. It's like I'm like a little white girl. So already, like people know something's up. Okay. <laughs> So I'll okay, just be in so, there just like hanging around, like trying to get free food. Like I was So what are the days they get paid? Every Friday you'd Fridays, go there? Yeah. And how much would you get at the bodega? Just a few bucks, enough for a train ride. Okay, so then you go on the train ride, <laughs> and then how'd you get the guy's ring? Uh, so I was talking to this guy. I was just always like super flirtatious. I mean, no no sense of danger. Like I one day I asked a guy if I should get a boob job and I let him start feeling my tits. <laughs> anyway, so it was one of the, I was having one of those days, and there was this guy. <laughs> Every day, yeah. <laughs> then. And there's this guy there who was like sulking, but like flirting with me. Sulking, sulking. sulking. Oh, I think yeah. I said soaking, like in a soaking. Tongue. Oh, sulking. <laughs> so he's in a bad mood. Okay, go on. Yeah. So he was he was sulking, and I was friendly. So I started talking to him, and he was having these marriage problems, and his his wife had like a boyfriend or some. Whatever. People are married, they have problems. So he's having okay. these problems, and he was talking about, like, making his wife jealous and, and all these things. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was to the effect where I was a woman right then and there giving him attention. And his wife didn't appreciate him at all. Mm-hmm. But as a woman in front of his face, I would appreciate his his marriage, his wedding, more than she would. Okay. So it ended up coming down to the ring. And I was like, I would appreciate this ring more than she did when she gave it to you and it was just at this point where like some some finesse i'm a finesse there is what i do like gift of gab i never want and he goes okay take it he ended up yeah he was vulnerable and then i like gave him then i slipped in the sob story you know i'm this girl i had nowhere to live i need money if if i had this you know it would give me a chance and then how much did you sell the ring for 300 bucks so much money (laughs) (laughs) i was so excited i couldn't believe it 300 dollars I know. And do you think that kind of life. do you think that it started to step? Like first it was five dollars at the Spanish deli, then it was a three hundred on the the um train and then like so then, then it went did... to ten thousand dollars. Okay, how did we get to ten grand? <laughs> I bought a computer and okay. I had a built in webcam. The computer was like two hundred and fifty dollars. It was like this tiny square thing. It was the smallest computer available. Okay. I bought it and then I be- became a webcam model. It cost zero dollars to start. And I made right. ten thousand dollars my first month. Never looked back. Got an apartment. Bought a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> like, Why I was, is a vacuum cleaner? Because I wanted to be like an adult. Oh, okay. And I was I, I was living in like a really like disgu- disgusting basement. Have you like tried a, the Bona um, <laughs> the Bona mop? It's a I, great mop. It's I, one of my sponsors. Anyway, go oh, on. I was like, I don't, I don't We're clean gonna my get own you. house at this point. <laughs> well, your housekeeper might like the Bona mop. Go on. I don't know. Yes. Um, so at this point, I was living in this like horrible basement. There was literally like a shit pipe. Like every time someone flushed a toilet upstairs, you could like hear the shit going out. It was, like shit crusted around it. There was no. It was okay. horrible. It was unfinished. There was no ceiling. So every time someone walked, sheetrock would fall on my face. While you're trying to web crit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I have pictures of me in this tiny little thing, like with like cat ears. And so, on. what would you do? Just put cat ears on in like a bra, and then do like sexy stuff, and yeah. just show your body, and yeah. like play with yourself, and whatever. Yeah, whatever they wanted. I didn't care. Okay. I had one webcam client who wanted me to pretend to be dead. Okay. And they would just literally just lay there like this. For how long did you have to pretend to be dead? That was the hard part. Is I didn't know when the show was over. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, didn't know when the webcam was over. So I would like try to like. Open an eye and then see, because after you finish a private cam show, it puts you back in the public chat. Okay. So it's like, at some point, I would wake up and it's the public chat, like people being like, should we call an ambulance? Like, is this chick okay? Is she sleeping? Is she dead? And I'm like, oh, show's over. Okay. Um, so would you, what were some other fetish things guys would watch? You have pe- guys into feet and stuff? Um, that's like not even a fetish at this point. <laughs> that's so. That's so like. It's like a kink. It's like oh, you like feet. Like some. There's like. That's like nothing. Butt man, feet man, like booba man. No. I'm okay. What's about a like what's a weirder fetish? That's... Like peeing. peeing oh. Stuff. But it was fine. At some point on webcam, I had to go to the bathroom anyway. So, so why not? Like, why yeah, not get something care. out of it? I don't care. Yeah. What about pooing? Do you have to poo? I never did that. I had a girlfriend who would do that, and it's just. So they would just watch her poo. No, she would poo on the guy. <laughs> oh, poo on the guy. <laughs> That was the girl who got me into porn. That's why it's Let's good. talk about her. Okay, so now you're in the <laughs> webcam. You have your 10 grand a month, so you leave from the pipe shit place. Mm-hmm. 
And you move where? I got an apartment like yeah. 300 feet away. Okay. And it was just, oh my God, it was so good. There was a window. That's I didn't nice. have a window in this basement. There was no window. Okay. Yeah, it was so sad. But you're still on the East Coast. Yeah, I was in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, so I got that apartment. Okay, and where do you meet this girl that's like, let me tell you about my great porn life? Um, We met on a photo shoot Mm because I was doing like Craigslist nude modeling (laughs) at that time. Uh, So I met her on a photo shoot and she told me that she had started doing porn, like amateur porn. So she started connecting me with those studios and then I actually got like a real porn agent. And then he was like the East Coast version of the West Coast agency. And then they had introduced me to them finally, and that's like how it came to be. But I just kind of like, I didn't fall into it. Everything. So was did you do like? Tur- I feel like now all porn is is like webcam and private things. Like, did you no. do like the actual like movies that we used to watch in the nineties? Like, how old I do you feel think I am. I'm 28. <laughs> no, I think you're. Oh well, I mean, you look very young, but I just feel like like one thing I'm always really interested in is mm. like all these like documentaries about 90s porn and when I was in my 20s there was like Mm -hmm. public access show and they'd have all these porn stars on it and I kind of liked hearing their story and stuff and then it was all done here in the valley and then that all seemed to sort of change though with with technology I feel like do they still do like those full-blown like two-hour movies with a script and everything oh for sure yeah oh they do yeah oh good I'm glad the art isn't lost (laughs) (laughs) yeah they call them parodies oh okay Mm -hmm. yeah like parody films but then the, I'm sure they have like other big ones. So who then? What was? What's been your biggest thing that you've done? I don't know. See, the thing with me is I was such a hooker that every time I got offered a big movie, I was like, no, this is gonna take longer than if it was a shorter scene. So I tried, like, I dodged all these things because I knew like time is money. Uh, oh, so you wouldn't want to be the lead. No, you'd hell want. No. You'd no. rather go and get your scene done and get go your get money. Go get fucked. Go home. Get my money and then go out at night and then make all the money there. Like it was just. It's always as a as an escort. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you didn't care about the art didn't of being the porn star. No, it was a marketing tool. Think about it like in in business, right? You have to pay for a production company to produce a commercial for you, right? To advertise whatever it is you're trying to sell. In porn, if you are an escort, the porn company pays you to make an ad. For your escort services, basically, that yeah, gets produced around the entire world. So I'm like, yeah, you want to see how I am in the sack? <laughs> Why don't you watch, mm-hmm. you know, Hot Girl, yeah, Browsers and Hot Reality Girl in, in in Calabasas or whatever your yeah. movie is, well, yeah, yeah, whatever it's called. So to me, I was just turning around. I'm like, what other what other in- industry in the world is going to pay you to do a promotion for your own company? Like, it was, it was an amazing opportunity. I couldn't believe that this even existed. So okay, so that's that. what you did. So you used, and then were you able to take those clips and like put it out there for yourself, or you you would just have to refer them to those movies? Like, how would well, they I mean, see the, it? The clients, fine. I mean, I don't. It doesn't sound like you watch any porn. I don't really. <laughs> Sorry. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Like literally everywhere. Yeah, I really all don't watch the, porn. Yeah, like all over the internet. Well, we would watch, remember we'd watch Cinemax, Peter, and then we would get in fights about which street we thought they were filming on. Oh, my God. Because I'm like, ah, uh, that's Kenter. And he'd be like, no, that's, oh. yeah. Like, and we just, because I grew up here, I felt like I knew every cul-de-sac and I would be more interested in where this backyard was. Okay. Yeah, and then we just. for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, porn, like as soon as the scene drops, it's. Everywhere it's on all the tube sites. It's on oh, okay. like it's everywhere. It's literally it's like um, it's it's gone viral essentially. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. So then, how did you first start becoming then a paid escort? Um, in New Jersey, that happened. Okay, yes, a photographer had offered me money to do more, so I was like, sure, fine. To do more than take photos. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was like, sure, fine. Like I was never the girl. Was like, gee, I don't know. I was like, oh, great. Yeah, this is wonderful. More money? Sure. Okay. Whatever you need me to do. Put it where? Okay. You have a friend? Sure. <laughs> like, I just didn't care. I wanted money so bad. <laughs> so, and will you do anything for money? At this point, no. Hell no. Okay. So, what's the worst stuff you've done for money that you have, you don't have to do anymore? <laughs> okay. Um, fuck Brad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> probably. Brad, the dead guy Brad. that gave me the racehorse? Yeah, Brad. Brad was the worst thing I've ever had to do for money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Brad. would you do scenes with, like, two guys and stuff? I wanted to. But I just never came up. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, I did like a... (laughs) I remember now. Yeah, I did. So I got booked for this scene. It was just one guy. But then there was other guys there. So I was like, let's just do them too. And they're like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And then we did it. 
And why would you, and you didn't get paid any more, but you just thought the scene would go further around the internet? Or like, why would you go? I, if, I if like you're all, having sex. So you love having sex. Yeah. So you were like, yeah, I'll just <laughs> screw a few guys at once. You didn't well, care. Well, porn guys, yeah. Porn okay. star dick, I'm, it's really good. So just like, yep. Okay, so like, they know what they're doing. They have a big dick. Yeah. And do you follow all the rules with the condoms and the testing and all of that? All the testing, yeah. But no yeah. one uses condoms in porn. But you get tested every two weeks. So when that rule came down, that was one of the documentaries I saw that I was confused about, <laughs> where they did make the rule that you had to have the condom, but now they don't? I don't or really no know Or there's no way to ha- regulate it? I don't know what happened Or if it's not it. in Los Angeles, or so, I don't know. I think it's like L.A. County. You're oh, supposed okay. to shoot with condoms, so like a lot of uh, companies moved out of L.A. County, Vegas. Got it. Uh, every once in a while, like a studio will call the cops on another studio. Yeah. They're like trying to screw up their scene, but they just have the girls be like, hey, don't post pictures of where you're shooting today. Okay. Like oh, not, I see. Yeah. Okay. It's like not a thing. I feel like every time cops go to a porn set, it's it's not to enforce the law. They just want to see people having sex. Okay. It's never happened to me, so I, I truly don't know. So, I mean, did you ever get into the high-paying, like, stripping? No. That wasn't for you. That was too much work. It's, it's not that it was too much work. I'm just not an entertainer in that sense. Like, oh, okay. It's just, like, it's like pandering to, like, a group of people. Like, it just doesn't seem smart to me. Like, okay, I don't so how did you bed. get into the escort thing where you're like, I'd like some, sh- I'd like to go shopping. I want a pretty woman experience. Because what I pretty call- Pretty woman is not real. That movie's a bunch of bullshit. Um, excuse not me. No, not- just kidding. Oh. I, um, <laughs> I was like, is that your friend? I'm sorry. No, but I, I, what I've been fascinated with, which I've talked about on the show, is I've coined a term- and you can use it as long as you give me credit because we are working on getting it trademarked. But it's called Hooker Light, L-I-T-E. Okay. Be- and basically, it's like what you're doing. It's almost like a <laughs> girlfriend. It's more of a girlfriend experience. It's more you go on the trips. You go on the yachts. Sugar baby it's stuff. It's sugar baby stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Like it is a hooker, but it's not... The traditional sense of what we saw when we were younger, you know, of like you're literally walking the streets. Yeah. You have a pimp. No, you're your right. own boss. Yeah. You decide... I love it. You should trademark it fast because I have a hoe trademarked. And people, Peter, get on that. People, hooker light. Uh, I mean, people love it. It sounds like crystal light for hooker. Uh, we have Juicy Scoop, but I like hooker light. I also do toddler jump. That's when everybody <laughs> oh. on Bachelor jumps and, like, puts their legs around the guy. You know when oh, you were oh, watching Bachelor? Cute. I go, that's oh, yeah. a toddler jump. Oh, and then like hooker that. light. Yeah. So I have yeah. some of my own terms that have really taken yeah, off. Yeah, just trademark them. It's, it's like $450. Like, it's nothing. You can have it done in a day. I got it, guy. I you need it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very <right, right. laughs> I can take care of you. <laughs> okay, so so what was, so was how do you get into the, the, meeting these rich guys that will buy you racehorses? What happened here? <laughs> Tell me about Brad. Um, so I had an agent. I okay. had an agent that helped me get in. But, to the escorting. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. to escorting. They worked with my porn agent, which a huge documentary just came out, like, exposing him as, like, sex trafficking pimp. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Just came out on NBC, like, a few days ago. Four days ago. What's yeah. it called? Um, it's it's more of a headline. Oh. Than, yeah. yeah, it's like a news thing. Um, I can send it to you. It's but like, did you feel you Derek were being, Hay. but did you feel when you were dealing with this guy that you were being sex trafficked, kid, or did oh, you feel 100%. like- Oh, 100%. No, you trapped me in his house. Like, tell me about really that. traumatic, yeah. So so you met him through the photographer guy. Wait, um, how did you I meet met this him guy? From a, from a porn girl who referred me. It was kind of like a third party. And the porn thing. girl's like, oh, he'll hook you up with like some really rich guys for some good- No, escorting? this was my porn agent. He oh, also so the porn... owns an escorting agency okay. that doesn't directly run it. Got it. So, like, those people do it. It's just intense. So how did he trap you in your in his house? Because I lived in his house, and he wouldn't let me leave unless it was for work. And I didn't have a choice of, like, where I lived. He'd just be like, okay, you're living in this house now. So and once you met him, all of a sudden you're trapped in his house. What happened to your cute apartment? I had to move from Jersey to L.A. Oh, so when you are in L.A., then you met with him, and you mm-hmm. thought you were going to stay a couple days. No, I knew for, for sure I was permanently relocating. I knew I was going to live but in his how house. Do, but when you... Okay, so go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I knew I was going to live in his house, but I didn't know that I was going to have to give him all of my money and then not be able to leave. I didn't know I was going to be sex trafficked. I thought I was going to do sex work, not be sex trafficked. Got it. Huge difference of consent. Yes. So that just happened. And <clears throat> How long were you trapped? Um, Like a year and a half. And then I tried to leave. Oh, my God. Where were you? Where was this house? Um, Valley Village. It's like we left to go to work and stuff and like go to dinners and like see escorting clients. But like all the money went directly to him and then he would just give you like whatever you so, got. So if you went out with a guy and you got what? How much? Well, that's when I had the opportunity to really start saving money because 
I would upsell. Like, I learned to upsell really well because I got to keep that money. No one knew about that money, so I didn't have to pay commissions. So the guy thinks you're going to go meet a guy for, I'm just going to use a number, so uh, for a grand. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the guy, you'd say, let's do this and this together, but I want an extra 600. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you would take that 600 and hide it Mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you'd come home and you'd go, here's a thousand. No, he he took all the porn money. So the escorting money, um, a large percentage of that went to the escorting agent. So I got to keep cash from that. And then also all the cash from upselling. So he took all the porn money. Oh. Yeah. And we got paid from it, but we just didn't know how much. Like, it was just, like, all the porn companies send all of your checks there. They cash the checks for you illegally. And then, like, at the end of, like, every two weeks, you they're like, oh, come pick up your money from the office. And then they just give you what they give you. Totally illegal. I sued him. He's the reason why I retired from porn. So with this guy, were you also in a romantic relationship with him, a sexual relationship with him? Did I gave him a blowjob, but that was it. I How often? I, just one time. I thought I had to. And then you just had like your own room at his Valley Village home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And did like, would you quaint. make him food? <laughs> would you have a, a meal no. with him? No. Well, we, but we he went lived out to eat there? A lot. We went out to eat a lot, but like for like fancy dinners and stuff, like keeping up the image. Right. Mm-hmm. And then when, when did you, after a year and a half, when did you have the strength to be like, I want my own money and I want to get, I don't want to do this and I don't want to have to answer to you anymore. Like, where did you get that? I got a boyfriend. <laughs> Where'd you meet the boyfriend? Again, it's in the entertainment industry. Okay. Yeah, th- that's the one that I'll tell you everything, but my personal life. Okay, that's okay. Private, personal. I don't want to drag him into this. Okay, but he gave. So he, but he gave you the strength he gave me to the leave. Strength. I had backup. Okay. And I had not had anybody. Like everyone in my life was positioned to be profiting off of me, and he was like the one person. I was like, "The fuck are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. get out of there!" And I'm like, "I'm allowed." He's like, "Yes." He's like, "You're 23 years old and get the fuck out of the house." He's like, "I'll help you find an apartment." And I was like, "Okay." And when you look back, why do you think? It didn't occur to you just to get up and leave. Like, what is the psychological mess that they're putting on you that would make a girl stay in a place where she's not literally tied to the bed? Um, Two things. One, it was me being blindly loyal. I was like, this guy put me up in his million-dollar house in L.A. He's getting me work. I would have never been able to do this for myself. So I had this loyalty to him. And um, also, they keep you in debt. So it's like you have to stay, you have to work to get money because you owe them money and because they're keeping money from you. So it's like, well, this, how do they owe you money? Hunger. Because they're like, here's this great outfit. Like, how are they keeping you in debt, though? I don't get how they're keeping you in debt. Well, it just depends. Like, kill fees cost money. So if you don't go to a shoot, they take money from that. And it's just like, you n- and then you never know how much money you're actually making. So even if you are not in debt, they take your checks anyway, and they could just be giving you a tiny amount. Like, they forced me to webcam, and I was like, I came way too far to be webcaming, but I had to webcam three days a week. They took all of the money from that, never saw a dime from it. So it's just like you're hungry. Like, you want to keep working, you want to keep working because you're trying to get some money. And were there other girls at yeah. the house with you, and did you yeah. form a bond with them or anything? Mm-hmm. No, I won't talk to anybody. I didn't want to get kicked out of the house. Because he didn't want you guys becoming friendly, right? That's one thing I found with sex trafficking. They don't really want the girls to, like, bond. Um, I guess. To to me, I was so brainwashed that I didn't want to talk to anyone. Because I was just, like, I want... I wanted him to see me as, like, the best one. Because I didn't... I would see So you're, like, competitive a little. "Mm -hmm, Yeah, Mm -hmm. super competitive. Like, I was always defending him. I was, like, he gave me this amazing life. And everything was great until I got that boyfriend. And then it was just, like, you could not handle it. It's crazy. So then how, how did you leave? Did you just get up one day and leave? Mm-hmm. I told him I found a place and I'm leaving. And I hope we can maintain a professional relationship. And then he started blocking all my porn bookings. And it was kind of a blessing in disguise because that's when I went into full-time escorting. And I got a different escorting agent. Um, and what's an escorting agent like? I mean, the, the most famous escorting agent is Heidi Fleiss. And that was just, from way back pimps. when. They're They're gross. They're so disgusting. Are there are there many women that are in this business as the escorting? Um, one of the agents was, but she was p- like part of a couple. So they're like a husband and wife duo. Okay. Uh, but they're they're garbage. Like, so was the second guy. I finished my escorting career. I peaked when I was word of mouth only. Okay. So I had to ditch that agent as well because that agent's like, if you don't fuck me, I'm not going to give you a book. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so tired of this shit. Like, you just get so tired of it. At, like, one point, it's like, how much can you consume me, you know, before I'm allowed to start earning money? Jeez. Yeah, so it was just so, so that's so, so that was when the wake-up call came, and that's when 
the entrepreneurial like, yeah. and you finally came out and you're like mm-hmm. enough of this shit yeah I knew exactly what I was doing but it's like all those things needed to happen because that's what made me want to mentor hoes because it's like I don't want anyone to suffer for you know years and years and years like I did constantly being lied to and manipulated and stolen from and sexually assaulted and you know because it's like sex work can be an amazing opportunity to change your life it changed mine but I had to pay so many pay for it so much like with my my finances and my soul and all these things because I didn't know any better so once you're gone from this guy and you're Mm -hmm. still you and you have a good relationship with your boyfriend Mm -hmm. but you're escorting and your boyfriend doesn't care that you see other guys in that way he's okay with it he's seen porn girls before he knows the deal okay Mm -hmm. so you have your own place so you don't live with a boyfriend or Mm -hmm. do you so Mm -hmm. you have your own place and then you have these weird escort agent people and when do you just go okay I'm gonna branch out on my own like and how did it all come back is that when you went met this delight Brad <laughs> I'm trying to remember when I split it off with the You're... second guy oh sorry I'm yeah reminiscing position <laughs> yeah I don't let's see okay I feel like I broke it off with the second escorting agent when he stopped me halfway on like I was tour- touring from Manhattan to Boston, and he stopped me halfway. Touring? You mean like uh, escort touring? Oh, how does escort touring work? Because <laughs> I go, I go from comedy club to comedy club, and I sometimes feel like a real whore. I imagine it's similar. Yeah, you just you. Although, like as a whore, like, you actually have to do the whoring. Like you just like imagine laying in a hotel room. Okay. Only your legs are a revolving door. Yeah. <laughs> But um, you can make like, like I would make like forty grand, fifty grand, sixty grand in in a couple weeks. No, a couple days. Oh, good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. And you were never worried about these guys that like they could come and kill you. I mean, I've been attacked before. And so, what what, if, <laughs> what precautions have you learned to try to prevent that from Keep happening? Keep your shoes again? on, <laughs> so that you can run. Yeah. You listen. You cannot get very far without shoes. Okay, you're gonna hit. You're gonna get out of there, and you're gonna get onto the pavement, and then what? You just can't run that fast or that far without your shoes on. Yeah, but if you have like, <laughs> but are you having track shoes on while you're screwing, or do you no, have no, like a heel, heel? The heels because they have the the knife. <laughs> so you the could, blunt object is the shoe. So you keep your heels on as a weapon, but also as a a running method. Mm. Yeah, it's a very specific type of shoe. I recommend. To, what is it? Uh, platforms with straps. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like Mary Jane, but platforms. Kind of, yeah, I think yeah. kind of like a, like a stripper shoe, right? Yeah. They're like the athletic shoes for right. sex workers. Oh, okay. Yeah. They got to have the straps because if you're like with a guy, he can like take your shoe off. Right. But if it's strapped on, like you have multiple straps, like it's not going anywhere. Have you thought about creating your own line of shoes? <laughs> I haven't. I'm focusing on a lot of other things. Okay. It's easier um, for me to recommend the shoe than to design it. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> All right, maybe you could just partner up with someone. Yeah. Um, shoe dazzle. Anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so now when do you start becoming more of like a girlfriend and not just like all these different people? A girlfriend to who? I mean, a girlfriend to like this guy, Brad. Oh, Brad. Like when do you start become more of like a relationship type of a thing? I mean, it was on Brad's terms. Okay, so, so- how did you meet this guy? Um, as a as an escorting client. Okay, and he, then he was like, "I'd like to see you on a more regular mm, basis." Yeah. Uh huh. I was like, "All right." And so, <laughs> and where did he live? Beverly Hills. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, how often would you see him? He saw me a lot. Well, it started off slow. We would see each other like once every couple weeks. Okay. And then he was just getting like more and more interested in me, and then he would see me like almost every day. And then I was I, sleeping at his house. He tried to get me to move in the first night that I met him. Uh huh. I said no. <laughs> and did you like the house? Like, was it beautiful? Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Beverly Hills mansion. So beautiful. And he was just single or divorced single or guy. what? He's a son of a billionaire. Oh, okay. So it, that's like the worst kind because it's like he inherited all of his money. He's never uh-huh. worked a day in his life. So he has no concept of like being a human being, like mm-hmm. working for money or anything like that. And he's never had a real girlfriend. He right. only had been hiring hookers, I think, since he was like 16. Since his bar mitzvah, I think it's when he had the first one, and, and then it was, Hills that High. was a wrap. Yeah, that was a wrap. Um, so it was really hard to 
to connect with him because we're just from different social classes. Like, it's, yeah. we didn't have the concept of, of working, of earning money or affection. I mean, I did he have any real friends? Was everyone, like, a paid friend? Yeah, everyone. No no real friends. It was really sad. And so uh, what would you do? Just have to watch movies with him and go out to fancy dinners and yeah, and shop? And then how long did that go on for? Five years. Five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And while you still had this other boyfriend, and did he ever know about the other boyfriend, the Brad guy? So one time I slipped. Okay. And I mentioned my boyfriend's name, and he's like, who the fuck is that? And I'm like, my bodyguard, Avi. Like, you think I'm going to go out without a bodyguard? Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. But did he still think that you were doing other work besides with him? No. I was, though. Right, but, he, <laughs> but you didn't let him think that. Yeah, no, because he was paying. I mean, at that point, he was paying me so much money. He was paying for How much was he paying? I mean, the government might be listening. Okay, all right. <laughs> he, was paying you, he was paying you a good salary. Yeah, I, I mean, I made millions of dollars from him. Just, Over those just years. Just him, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> would you go shopping with him, or were you just like, give me the money, I'd rather shop alone? <laughs> That's what I told him most of the time. But there was times where he was like, I really, really want to go. So I'd be like, fine. And we would do, like, Brad is a very special person. Why? He, since Brad never had a girlfriend, a real yes. girlfriend, or a wife, or family, we would do this thing where we would go to restaurants, and then we would have fights out in front of them about his wife. And I would pretend to, like, be madly in love with him and, like, be like, I'll kill your wife. I hate her. And, like, we would do, like, these things. It would make him feel, like, like, like so. Wait. So you go to, <laughs> this is amazing. So, <laughs> We'd go so to Ivy, be, the Nobu, like, all So these. you're at Nobu. Okay. And then <laughs> the guy's like, and here's your ahi tuna. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Being now. dramatic, and, yeah, thing. Let's just, see like, it. I'm going to be Brad. Come on. <laughs> you really just do it. I'm gonna have to start You're an actress. Me. Come on. Go. No, not an actress. Okay, okay go. <laughs> I don't know how much longer we can keep doing this. <laughs> don't make me cry, public. <laughs> just relax. It's okay. You're making a scene. I want it to be just us. I don't want to be in these dimly lit restaurants anymore. I know I fuck you better than her. <laughs> <laughs> and you would say it like loud like that? I would get up and be like, I'm going to bathroom do coke unless you leave your wife. <laughs> <laughs> there was no limit of escalation because he's, <laughs> it's so, amazing. he's so rich. So it's like if we did anything wrong, you just pay people and they'll go away. So would people <laughs> say, would, would you ever have like a restaurant manager go, you we've guys have them, to go? We've had them look at us, but then they're like, that's Mr. So-and-so. Like, Yeah. Just, they're always in here fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and so his fantasy was to have everybody at the restaurant think that he had a wife at home mm-hmm. and a mistress yeah, that really wanted sad. more. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. It was a service that I was doing for him. Like, those were our best So moments. now, would you ever have to do anything with his family? <laughs> like because Yeah, I knew it was whole family. And they, they <laughs> thought you were the girlfriend. That's the hooker. Well, no, everyone. When you're, when you're at that level... It's like they know everyone's paid to be there. Everyone, right? Wives, girlfriends. If you're not from the blood of that family or the same social class, like you're paid. That's just how it is. And did he have like siblings that had girlfriends or wives that you'd hang out with? Um, no, we all kind of. Okay, so Brad's kind of the black sheep of his family. Okay, believe it or not, most of them had jobs and hobbies and uh-huh. families, except him. So it was kind of like Brad. He didn't want to be really around them. Like, he just wanted to be around me. Like, I was the hobby. I was the entertainment. Right. So it was always like he would complain about his family to me. Can you believe my mom made me go to the doctor? I'm like, yeah, Brad, you're 400 pounds. Like, <laughs> I can believe it. He he stopped, like, emotionally growing, I think, in high school. I think he actually had, like, something wrong with him. I think he had, like, Asperger's or something. Okay. Um. So he just... He just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One time I took him to the doctor and they asked me what was wrong with him. Like was, emotionally or brain wise. Yeah. Like, what's like, what's the problem? I was like, do you think there's something wrong with him? How come no one's telling me? Like, <laughs> I was so involved in Brad's life. Like I was his caretaker. So then, so you said that he would abuse you or emotionally abuse you. Oh when no, he was sexually on, abused me as well. Yeah. On whippets. Oh, that time he tried to attack me. No, Brad has, like, sexually assaulted me, like, multiple times. Like, I'm telling you, like, the the fun memories. But, <laughs> no, Brad, like, literally, 
It was so extra- like, like extravagant sexual abuse. So like one time he bought me a Rolex just so he could like piss all over it and then make me wear it for a week straight. Wait, were you literally eating pee? Yeah, like yearning. So he'd put the Rolex where? Just on the floor? No, on my wrist. And then he would piss on me in a bathtub and then also come on it and then wear that for a week. Oh, you don't want to do that? Here's $20,000. Wear it for a fucking week. Take a picture of it every day. Okay, but hold on. <laughs> is, is like, can you, so you can't clean the, the cum out of it, so if you turn your wrist, you can see the white crusties? And you'd have to just wear that? Would you ever try to hide the white crusties? Or? I just want to go out. I would just take it off. Oh, okay. And it's just like... Oh. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, Brad was funny in the regard, like, we would have, like, these restaurant fights and all that. Yeah. And, like, shop and race horses and all that. But it's like... Did you go on boats with Brad? No. Oh. I didn't want to be seen with him. Okay. Yeah, it's, we could have well, had... you were being seen with him. You were going to the restaurant. But that was fun. <laughs> I liked I liked the acting portion. See what honestly, I'm saying? You are an actress. Honestly, I really... That was, that was us at our best because that's when I felt like I was really doing a service for him. Okay. And I didn't feel like like a thing that he was just masturbating into like i felt right. like that made me feel like i had some value and okay. when that brought him like you could just like see how happy he was like feeling like like an alpha male like a prize like i had a wife and kids yeah, like and just, a mistress i'm super successful i built this own business yeah yeah so that was like that was the best times yeah God. But outside of that, I didn't want to be seen with him. One time I went to get pizza and he like tried to put his dick in me on the line. I'm like, what is wrong with you? At the pizza line? Yeah, literally, outside? Like, literally like literally like grabbing my ass like grabbing my ass, like trying to like stick his tongue down my throat. And I'm like, Brad, you're rich, but you like we can't have sex in public. Like, this is a fucking California pizza kitchen. Like, this is not even like this is not even like a five-star restaurant. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't want to be in public with him for a damn good reason. But as so, his health started to decline, I liked then then the pleasure of me being in public. I mean, how bad was up. his health? Could he walk? Towards the end of his life, no. He was in a wheelchair. Really? And you had to push the wheelchair? No, he's too fat. We had to go. <laughs> we would literally like, be at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and we would get out of the car, and like the the bellboy would like put him in the wheelchair and like push us to the polo lounge, and I'd be like <laughs> in my Louboutins, like it was. I felt like a predator. <laughs> I loved it. You loved it? Mm-hmm. I would do that part again. Because I knew he couldn't get up and touch me. Like, so finally you were in, so that, so after, so the final year you were in control. Yeah, it was you great. You felt like you were in control. Mm, good times. So then what happened? Did he die? He fucking died. He up and died. He owed me money. How much did he owe you? A lot? Probably like two grand. I bought a, a domain. Oh. Uh, I bought like a domain name. Okay. And um, he's like, yeah, I'll pay you back. And he died like two days later. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, so... <laughs> How did you find it? Was he in your present? Were you in there when he died? No. So this, like, I, like, had, like, a premonition. Like, I knew he died. Mm-hmm. And, cause he so did, you were not with him that, that night? No. Uh-huh. He, he died in his house. His housekeeper was, like, there or something. And I I just, I don't know. Like, you would just know something. Mm-hmm. I knew something was wrong. I knew he was dead. And I had just started my company. Mm-hmm. And I had to make a choice. Your and, company to mentor mm-hmm, pose. Mm-hmm. Do and you feel like you're the Teddy Mellencamp of, like, she does this thing all in where people have, she's, like, accountability coach, and they, they have to check in with her every day and say they worked out, and this is what I ate, and then she's like, you ate too much, or go to another setup. I feel like that's what you are for hoes. Um, I try not to be. I just, I... Just a mentor. Like a life coach? I mean, I, I develop adult brands. To me, it's like, if you don't have your shit together... Like in your personal life, I, I can't help you. Wait, let's build get, let's a finish this story. Brand. Then I then I want to hear about okay. the million dollar brand. Okay, okay. so <laughs> you had a premonition. The housekeeper, did she call you? She was blowing up my phone, <laughs> and yeah. I just didn't want to talk to her because you just. I didn't yeah. want to talk to. I knew I knew he died. Like I just knew in my heart. That really, he was dead. So I you're like he, a little psychic. Yeah, I knew he died. I'm like super psychic. Uh huh. To the point, like he can haunt me. I'm like stop it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a whole nother. Thing. But yeah, so I knew he died and I just didn't want to face it. I didn't want to deal with it. I was building the company and it was just like in the early phases, it's just like it's like a newborn baby. You just can't right. leave it alone. So it got to a point where Brad's mom called me and she was like, You need to come to the hospital with Brad's wallet. I had his wallet. And I was like, Fine. So I got in the car and I knew I was going to see him dead. 
And she was, didn't tell you that he was dead at no! that point? No! Yeah, the, I guess they were just trying to get me to the hospital. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And it was, at that point, I had kind of, like, gone into denial. And I'm like, this is bizarre. Like, I mm-hmm. wish this man dead every day for five years. There's no way he actually fucking died this time. <laughs> <laughs> I have it written down in like a wish jar. Like I would like every year I'd, like set intentions. And there's like actually like on a little piece of paper. So that's like a, like a secret board, but except you do a wish jar. I don't know what a secret board is, but you know how people do say working the secret where you like have oh, a Oh, like manifesting. Board. Yeah. 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 Yes, it was just a tiny jar. And yeah. It, it, it said it on the piece of paper, and it was always in there, like every year, like intention setting. And I was like, there's no way this shit worked, and it did. So then I was like, <laughs> yeah. And then I was excited about my inheritance. Oh, okay. Because he did put you in the will. Oh, yeah. But he would play this game with me. It's like yes. he would put me in and then he would take me out. If I pissed him off, he took me out. And then he would put me back in. Well, but you were you literally me, really seeing paperwork or was this all verbal? I, mean, I put estate, you in, I took you out, I put you in. I mean, the, I knew the estate lawyer. So, okay. Like, it was legitimately in there. For so like at, one po- at one point, you were in it and you yeah. saw it and you oh, yeah. signed and you. Whatever. Yeah, for for sure. Yeah, I was told. So like, when did was, you find out that he, was, he took you out? When I called the estate lawyer, I was like, "Hey, I think enough time has passed. Um, <laughs> where's the money at? And what were you expecting to get? Like a hundred million dollars plus real estate in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And when had he removed you from it? Uh, eight months before he died, because he attacked me on whippets, and I refused to see him again. So wait, you hadn't talked to him for eight months? We had started seeing each other again, like a few months before he died, like two months before he died. So you you didn't see him for how many months? Like six months. And then mm-hmm. why? what made you come back around again? Because you thought he was about to die? No, he gave me $30,000, $32,000 for two hours. So I was like, fine. He's attack. like, I'll give you 30. So you got to 32 because you obviously was negotiating back and forth <laughs> until you landed at 32. Well, 30, I added 2000 for transportation. <laughs> to take you from the valley to Beverly Hills? Yeah. How much was that Uber? Okay, so <laughs> I have my own driver. Oh, okay. I still gave him like a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay, so you're like, okay, I need two thousand transportation fee. You get over there, mm-hmm. and then you kind of started up again of like hanging out. Yeah, but at that point, was he so ill that you didn't have to do anything sexually anymore, or did you still have to? That thing still worked. Oh, unfortunately, right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the man paid thirty two thousand dollars. Okay, he could get something for that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, so wait a minute. So you call the estate, the the lawyer, and now these couple. So you wait. Do you go to the funeral? No, his mom wouldn't let me go to the funeral. And I'm like, whatever. I was just going there to see the estate lawyer anyway. So yeah. I didn't care. Yeah, I was slightly offended though, and I was like, I saw Brad more than any of you guys did. Right. But I could still see him if I went in. I'm go- next year on his death anniversary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Go to the cemetery. Mm-hmm. And so when, so then you call the uh, the estate attorney a couple months later. How mm-hmm. how much longer? A couple weeks or what? Um, I think I waited a month. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I said, Hey, how are you? It's 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 me. Yeah. And I was like, How much am I getting? And he just said, You really want to know? I was like, Yes. And he's like, Nothing. And I'm like, When did he take me out? And he's like, Eight months ago. I was like, okay. I hung up the phone, and then I just got on my computer and went back to work on my company. <laughs> and never looked were back. Were you shocked? I was shocked. You really thought you were going to get $100 million that day? Mm-hmm. I was really surprised. And then I was just kind of like, to me, it's like, <clears throat> you can't devastate me. Like, it's it just happened to me so many times where it's like, there's no point in being devastated. It's like, okay, that, that sucks. Too bad for you. Get back to work or you're going to die. So I was just like, okay. Called my man. I was like, we didn't get any money. And he was like, all right. Love you. <laughs> Sent out a marketing email. <laughs> okay, so then how did you start to build this this business of helping other girls? I just wrote a book. I'd written a book and... I didn't know you had a book. Why did you... I wrote nine. I'm an author of nine books. You are? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Where are these books available? Everywhere, like Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Like What is the titles? It's um, it's a book series. It's the Complete Guide to Escorting. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't so, even know that. God, yes. I feel very honored that I like have you here. Oh. Kind of a big deal in the whole world. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so I, so I had written the first book because my house had been robbed and vandalized. And all of my designer shit, all of my jewelry, everything I had worked for, my entire career, gone. Mm-hmm. I had insurance on it. Not a big deal. It made all my money back and then some. Um, but my house was so badly damaged from, like, water damage. Like, these people were mad at me. Mm-hmm. 
I, I don't so, think so, I deserved it. So pe- someone, <laughs> someone specifically came after you mm-hmm. to damage your place and steal from you. Yeah, I think it was contractors. I'm, I'm known. I'm not a good boss. Like I will fire you if you look at me wrong. Like I don't care. I'm a horrible boss. Don't ever. So let you me hire think you. because you fired like a personal contractor to fix your house, mm-hmm. you think they came back and did this? For sure. Yeah, <gasps> I was doing construction on my house for four years. Go through cruise like I changed my underwear like it was they're gonna get pissed off at one point or another it was it would it makes sense though like yeah. in my mind I'm like okay so you know my house great you right. know you know where all the electronics are where you could turn off cameras or, or do whatever yeah. you want you, you have a you, you know the house so well you've been on the roof like it would make so much more money I mean so I definitely think with some of the like Beverly Hills housewives that have been robbed and stuff I mean I think that it is about having a lot of people I think it's for sure and yeah. then you're posting that you're on a trip and then you're not there exactly. I mean it's like yeah. they're so it's so easy you've made yeah. it so easy for these people yeah yeah so uh, same way, I'm like, all right, you shame on me. You got yeah. me. <laughs> so I was, it, it got to me at that point. I was really upset. Um, so I had moved into a hotel, and I was like going through like my grieving process of losing everything, including my home. And I was like, I have nothing left. And I was like, no, 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 no. There's no way I don't have anything left. And then I was like, I have my experience in life. What do I? What am I good? At? I have to be good at something. And I was like, escorting. So that's when I started writing this book about escorting. I wrote it all. I didn't even have my computer got stolen. So I just had my cell phone and I wrote it on my cell phone and <laughs> published it. And that's how it all started. People started reading it and reaching out to me. And they're like, this was so good. I have more questions. So I was like, all right, I'll write another book. And they're like, no, we want you to help us. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So so that's how we ended up at nine books. <laughs> I was like, no, there's. I have to answer all these questions. I know I can answer all of them. I couldn't. So how long ago was that? Like two years ago. And so, and what has happened since then? How has everything so grown? Um, I mean, okay, so I have, I have the books. I do the one-on-one mentorship. Um, I have a business directory. So for... the one-on-one mentorship, someone pays you like per hour mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. just get scoop and details? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's... Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's more like if you've read all my books, you've watched all my videos, you've used all the resources. I have an app called Ho, and it's just for girls to ask each other for advice because we're so tired of answering like trivial questions. It's really kind of female empowering. Totally, yeah. Um, so with so with no, the do any of these girls that you work with? None of them do have a like a pimp. No, they're all doing their own thing, mm-hmm. which is so much better. I can tell if a girl has a pimp in a second. <laughs> I won't work with her. Uh huh. It's not. It's nothing against a girl. It's just I know if I help her, I'm helping him. Yeah. So it's just like leave and then come talk right. to me. And so, um, okay, so you have all so this whole business. Mm-hmm. And what are some rules? If I was a new girl getting in the business, give me the top five, six tips or whatever to make me the most successful and safe um, sugar baby slash hooker light. Get paid first before you do anything. Yes, I've heard that. (laughs) Yeah, get your money first. Um, What about gift cards? Because this girl told me she got a gift card. Yeah, that's fine. no, it isn't fine. There was nothing on it. Oh, well, that's her fucking fault. Well, then you need you... a call. You need a check. These bitches are so stupid sometimes. Oh, you my check, God. I'm you great... check the gift card before you do anything. Yes. Okay. It's like these hoes. This is why I'm saying this is why I don't do like the little little introductory like advice. It's like I have nine books. I have all the videos. You do that. You, you become successful and then I'll help you. Cause okay. It's just like, oh my God, like this okay. So get paid first. Like, they what stress else? me out so much with like the dumb, the dumbest. What things. do you think about girls that go on the yachts mm-hmm. or go to Dubai? Mm-hmm. What's your tip for those girls? Because it seems like sometimes one girl kind of has to take it for the team, and then maybe, maybe so that maybe you can just be the friend and you don't have to fuck anyone. That girl's stupid. No, who's you are replaceable. You That's the number one rule for anybody in this game. You are one hundred percent replaceable. Okay. There is a younger girl. There's a prettier girl. There's a more hungry girl. That will take it from you. Every time I wanted to leave Brad, I was like, you know what? I'm sure there's a billion girls who would want to be in this position. They would happily fuck his nasty ass. So it's like you just have to get like back. Like you just have to get in the mindset. It's like you're a service person. You're mm-hmm. a fucking housekeeper. You're not any better than that. Okay. And a lot of these girls are like, well, I'm the the girlfriend. I'm like, you're on a billionaire's yacht. It's not your yacht. Like you are a guest on this yacht. Like you're. That's that's the thing that. What about girls that um are in that position and they want to try to get pregnant so they can have like an anchor baby? That's fine. Just know your cycle and try. To, how do I've you, helped girls get pregnant? Tell by, me like, how you help them get. How do they? How do you help them get pregnant? <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> you have to track your cycle. Okay. It's really important. And then a, the rest of it is a lot of finesse and setting the mood and, and all of that. But you have to get him on a on a regular cycle as well. And then you have to make sure you like slowly start Xing out all of your other lovers so that way you can 100% be sure. You need to be 100% sure it's his. Okay. 100%. So we're going to go through all this work for nothing. Embarrassing. Well, you might end up with a child, but it's just a paycheck, I guess, right? <laughs> I mean, it depends on the girl. It's like you got to make sure you at least like the guy. I mean, these are yeah. celebrities. You're getting pretty much yeah. like a real celebrity or or like a billionaire. What if the guy in, uh, insists on having condoms? Do you do a little safety pin in the I condoms? I mean, listen, legally, I'm not supposed to help girls be prostitutes. I, I help right. women sell time. Right. So, well, my I, tip- I've never given anyone the advice to poke a hole in a condom because they're have. a prostitute trying to get pregnant. Okay. Okay. I have though. <laughs> okay. I I've known about this trick for a long time. I mean, listen, it's just take easy. the safety pin, you keep them in the package, and you do the holes in the package. Do you know how easy it is to get a man to take off a condom? Like, oh, so just do that. So instead. easy, yes. Okay. <laughs> just have good pussy. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I've never had a guy be like, "Wait, no, I might get you pregnant." Like. So I need to put on those condoms. What about girls who go into the trash can and get the, the used condom out and try to I don't syringe know anyone cond- like, I don't know anyone like pred- I would, no. She that you don't recommend. Me. She can't talk to me. I would not work with her. Why? This is desperate. Too desperate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you gotta have, if you're what that if, desperate, okay, like. What about these girls that end up, do, don't you think there's anything scary about going to Dubai with these like princes and or being stuck on a boat? Like what if you're yeah. just stuck on a boat and you have to like screw a bunch of like Middle Eastern princes, and there's no way out but to jump overboard. What do you I mean, suggest about that? I mean, you you have to understand what you're signing up for. You're right. getting. I mean, the the sheiks in Dubai they pay so much money. It's like, yeah, you're gonna get sexually assaulted. Like, <laughs> like you Deal have with it? you have to know that you will be pushed to limits that make you feel like you your human rights have been violated. Because what I've read is that they are very into shitting on people. They're into a lot of things. Get ready. They just you need to know what you're signing up for. It is Dubai no joke. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think it's worth it? It depends who you are. I know girls who've come back happy and the girls who haven't. But they all got paid. That's for damn sure. But the ones that come back that are not happy, are they just totally traumatized? And they're like, I'm out forever or I'm just out. For the not only not the Middle East, stick, I mean, stick to Bahamas. I mean, every girl I know that's gone to Dubai has been happy and has gone back. Really? Even with the traumas, like let your asshole heal for a few weeks, and then, and then you know, <laughs> and then go back if you want to go back. God. It's really none of my business. It's like I'm not gonna ha- like I'm not like I'm and gonna what help do you, you develop. Think, a like brand. the main goal is for these girls. They just want money. Does anyone have like an aspiration of like? One day I, I would like to be married to somebody and sure. and have kids, but I'm just going to make all this money now while I'm hot as shit. Mm-hmm. Aren't they afraid that this this life, if they want to have a life after this, will catch up with each other in this day of social media and everybody knowing each other? Mm-hmm. But it's also a risk that you have to take. Are there? Do you have any tips for keeping it a secret? I don't think you should keep it a secret as far as, like, if you're really trying to find someone to love you, this is going to be such a huge part of your life. It's just like, do you, I mean, I lived a double life when I was with Brad and my man and escorting. Mm-hmm. Triple life. And it's just no way to live. So it's just like, if you're going to do this, if you're going to go full on and you expect to fall in love, he's going to find out eventually. So it's just like, prepare for that as well. And what do you say? Has anyone come to you crying, being like, oh my God, I'm in love with this guy. He's mm-hmm. nice. He's normal. We have great sex. But he found out that you know, I had this life for two years with these Dubai princes and these yachts and shit. I mean, that's not what I do. I don't help people with their emotional problems. Like, well, I'm asking you if I, uh, what would you say to Has this happened to you or no? You okay? <laughs> I, uh, what would you say to her? Is there anything that you could I'm say? I'm just, I'm not that nurturing. I'm okay. like, you knew what you were getting into. Okay, what you're you, right. I, I, I'm very solution oriented. So I'm like, what do you want do to Do people happen? have fake names and fake yeah. like personas on Instagram and stuff? Sure, everyone, yeah. 100%. That's what that's what I'm kind of saying. That's oh, the way yeah. that I think that you could sort of protect your future. Yeah, but you you can't expect to. Like you can hope, you can take as many precautions as possible. But yes, it, it's pro- it just is there any any bad secret anything that you like about pr- protecting yourself, like um, where to keep your passport so you don't become stuck in some country. That hap- that's happened. So like, what do you? There's this place. It's called Curacao. I don't know if you've heard of it, no. but it's like Curacao is this tropical. 
island where there are like trafficking laws or it's like this gray area where you can basically human traffic someone legally. Um, it happens in Greece as well. Uh-huh. And these girls will go thinking like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go on a cl- cruise. I have a cute sundress. A yeah. cruise. That's yeah. how they get you as a cruise. Yeah. They take your passport and they make you work in brothels until you work it off. And then they, you earn your passport back. So they think they're going on like a hooker light yacht trip. And they end up in a brothel like an American Trying girl. Trying to work off their passport, yeah. And there's no way they can call anyone or anything. I don't know. So now how does someone know that they're not going on a safe yacht billionaire trip and instead they're going to this other weird place? Is there any it's, way to to protect yourself? I mean, I mean, you're asking pretty big questions. <laughs> for well, me, every tell, time I'm, I'm, I, I can tell only, I'm extremely interested in this I can only speak subject. with personal experience. Every yeah. time I've worked for a billionaire overseas, it's been through a referral of a girl that I already knew or a girl that she already knew and that we could verify this person. Okay. They're real people. Like, we know their staff. Got it. You don't just you don't just take off with a person who promises to be a billionaire. Like, you don't do that. It's so stupid. It. And, like, please don't do that. But I bet there are girls. There are girls who do it. They're thinking, like, oh, I saw that. I want, you know. I worked with a girl pretty. who got sex trafficked through Greece. And she was like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, oh my What God. do you mean it wasn't that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying really hard to keep my composure. She's like, yeah, she's like, I made a ton of money. I didn't know I was going to be trafficked, but like, I made hella money. How did she get out of it? <laughs> she she earned her shit back. She's like, she was told that she was going there for like one specific job. Yeah. And then she ended up having to do a bunch of jobs while her passport was being held hostage. And she wasn't that. But upset. how did she know that? How did I mean? How did she know she wouldn't have been stuck there for five years? I don't know. They finally just finally someone just said okay. I didn't honestly. I don't ask the details. I'm like, okay, that's a thing that happened to you, because it's like we're on the clock. Okay, so I'm like, you're on the clock of beauty or what? The oh, the t- clock. Oh, the working. time. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just like, do you want to spend this whole session talking about yourself and things that have happened to you? Oh, when they come or, to see you, they're yeah. On the so clock. I'm like, like I a don't therapist. have time. Yeah, I don't have time okay. to like listen to your shit. What do you want to do with this time? Do you want to make money? Do you want to retire? What do you want to do? Maybe Thank- I be the person that they come to talk to first. <laughs> Tell me all their juicy stories. But it's like that's why I have the Ho app, and it's for girls to support each other in the community. Okay. I just I can't give. Listen, I used to care. I used you to like be the, so- you're like the Mother Teresa of hoes. <laughs> you're trying to save everyone, but you can't. You can't. Listen, I had to stop caring the time a girl got set on fire. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What happened? I used to be really, really emotionally invested in the girls. And, okay. like, I would, like, their tears were my tears. And, like, I would worry about them. I would check on them. Like, how are, I lent girls money, like, in the beginning. Like, so invested in these girls. And then one day, a girl went to see a client. And he set her on fire. He set her crotch on fire. And I t- had to take a few days off after that. And Did she live? She lived. Um, She lived. God. And I just... Was he arrested? Did anything happen to him? I can't talk about okay. it. Okay. Well, that's horrible. Uh, it was. Yeah. And it just... I just had to turn it all off. I was like, I can't help anyone if I'm constantly living the trauma with them. Got it. So it just... That just changed everything. And I was like, okay, your trauma is your trauma. I can help you find a therapist. I can refer you to, to your community on the whole app. You can get support from them. But I can't, like, I can't, that's not what you're paying me for. You're paying me for results. And your emotions are not going to ever produce results. So what do you want to happen? I want to make that strategy for you. And that's all this is going to be. So do you feel like you're more like of the, the traditional escort? Per- like, what do you think about the rise of sugar babies and sugar daddies and all these different websites that have it? The websites are garbage. I mean, everyone wants to, like, be in that life. They don't realize it's, like, reserved for people who actually have money and people who are actually willing to do the work. Like, every, the most common thing I hear from, like, square people is, like, I'd be a sugar baby if I didn't have to give the sugar. <laughs> and it's just, like, <laughs> like, it's, like, every conversation. Like, whenever I meet someone that's, like, square and they want to talk me. to me. I would right? always, I wanted to get dressed up and go to dinners. <laughs> Does platonic sugar exist? I'm, like, No. People think that it does. People they, think that they, they think that just the three-course dinners and a cute outfit exists, and it doesn't, obviously. Bitches will do that for free. Yeah. Like, they do. I mean, how many girls do you know in L.A. that are clout chasers? They just want to be around a rich guy. Oh, he has a Lamborghini. Do you know who he is? No. I yeah. just want to be around him. That girl does it for free. Has sex for free, too. 
Probably, yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, I mean, maybe in other parts of the country where you don't have girls like that. Yeah, I think in other parts of the country where there's like a sugar daddy, like an an average guy who's like 45 and has a few bucks can probably get a 25-year-old sugar baby that's like thrilled to go to a Ruth Chris and get 500 bucks to right. bone. pay your phone bill or something. Yeah, that's what I found when I yeah. investigated it. That's And that's those a thing. girls are not of your level of like attractiveness and beauty and like they're not, you know, they're like they kind of they're they're just young. The guys just happy to have a young girl, but they're not like yeah. LA I mean, model type. I I mean I I welcome people to experiment in that world. Uh, but the the market needs to be corrected. Honestly, if any I don't have time to develop this idea. So no. someone please do this for me. Then. Oh, good. I will. What is it? Okay. There needs to be a website for like the average Joe sugar daddies. Guys who want to feel like a sugar daddy. Maybe they can afford to pay your phone bill or like, you know, give you like a little gift card for lunch or something. Maybe buy you college sugar textbooks. So yeah, sugar daddy light. There you go. Sugar daddy light. <laughs> someone make that website. I don't have time. I would love to fucking make it. I just don't have the time. But I don't think just because you're not the top tier of, you're not the elite sugar baby, you're not the elite sugar daddy. I don't think that you can't still have fun with it. Right. But People hate it because their expectations and reality don't meet. So we just had this website where everyone's like, yeah, this guy's going to pay like one of your bills. You're going to get free lunch. Enjoy. You know, you know, like if you want to meet that type of person, he's on this type of website. And you right. can all hang out together. Bone, and whatever. Whatever you want to do. But I think there should be a place for them because the market is so saturated. But what's happening is the real sugar daddies, the, the elite sugar babies are getting discouraged. Because they just think everyone's a fake. So it's like, just put the fakes somewhere. Yeah. And I just, like, I want people to be happy. Like, I'm not, like, elitist in the way where it's like, well, if you're not the best, then you don't deserve it at all. Like, everyone deserves to live whatever lifestyle they want. Everyone deserves to get paid for fucking someone they don't really like. (laughs) I mean, or just, I mean, mean, basically, you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And every like, guy deserves to have a girl pretend to like him. Yeah. For a fee. Can, that that can be the slogan. <laughs> well, I think you're so entertaining. Thank you. And I do so think, are you. And I think what you're doing is good because you, you're helping other women not be sex trafficked mm-hmm. and not be um, abused and protect themselves and not have their money taken by yeah. some pimp or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um I love it. And you guys Thank should you. follow her. It's the Home Mentor. I'll put it, but it's H E A U X M E N T O R, the Home Mentor. And that's yes. probably the best way just to go on Instagram or, mm-hmm. or yeah, IG is like where I live. Yes. Very. Oh, yeah. Check out LydiaDupra.com. That's where all the education is. Um, I don't want to recommend my other stuff because. I feel like squares are watching this. It's not for you. <laughs> a lot of squares are watching. <laughs> you you can spectate on my Instagram, okay? <laughs> I am a square. I want you to know that. You can watch my YouTube. I'm I made a YouTube for with, squares. With I- intense curiosity. <laughs> you would like my YouTube. It's like okay. all the story times and oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's it's, the YouTube channel? It's, it's Lydia Dupra is Melina Mason, because okay. Melina is my poor name. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> my poor name is still Heather. <laughs> it's a good name. I know. I'm trying to bring it back. Yeah, it's a good can, name. When, can you recommend that the sugar babies that are like under 25, if they want to come up with a name, can you make them Heather's? Can you suggest I, that their poor name be, or their sexy name be Heather? I mean, a lot of research goes into the name. So oh. So you I, think would it's have just to do, dead? I don't know. I have to look up like the the birth rate and demographics. That's so. why I want you... <laughs> See what's going on is my <laughs> name, my age, my name is aging out. Right. So I need young girls to be named Heather, so it's not so obvious how old I am. I can't I can't manufacture personas to for your ego. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I you can change you were your name. Other women. Why don't you change your name? I feel like that would be easier. It would be immediately effective. All right, Kaylee <laughs> McDonald signing out. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> You're, You're so, so funny. You're-